you're such a nice crowd, the expectations as high as they ever were. And uh, it's always quite difficult, it's generally quite difficult once something's been hyped. You've heard nothing tonight, but this will be great. Oh, you're going to have such a good time. There's, you'd be entitled to have a part of you thinking, this is going to be shit. There's just no, no one can possibly live up to this massive wall of hype. You see it all the time. Everything's hyped so much. And we're sort of all quite used to it, really. You almost get blind to it, the amazing things that advertisers say. Like that, um, that advert for Yorkie. Yorkie, it's not for girls. That's amazing. That no one questions that. Imagine if it was Snickers, not for the Chinese. You know, uh, <laughs> in Nutrigrain, no Jews, thank you. You, know, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be allowed to do that because it's not for girls. That's allowed suddenly. This is avatar advertising is a very peculiar world, really. The world of hype. You can say anything. The trouble is, it, it almost means nothing now because it's gone too far. To, to try and actually get people excited now, you have to just set the bar so high. I saw a trailer for a horror film, Them, it was called. It's a, tr a terrible name, probably a terrible film, Them. But the trailer, as if I had any intention of seeing it, which I didn't, the trailer, if anything, made me even less likely to see it. It said, you'll never feel safe in your home again. <laughs> and you think, right, OK, I don't think I'll go and see that then, if anything. <laughs> this is, if anything, that's a warning more than the trailer. <laughs> Who wants that from an evening's entertainment? How's the film? Yeah, brilliant. We've had to move to Cheltenham, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> wife just cries herself to sleep. Great film, though. And, you know, we're all accustomed to the fact that it's all... Everything's exaggerated. I mean, we, we live in a world where people do exaggerate an awful lot because it's the only way that you can make yourself heard to get anywhere in life. You kind of... It feels sometimes like you have to be quite aggressive, quite boastful. Even some people that are regarded as greats are still fairly boastful. If you look at uh, Muhammad Ali is a good example, a hero to many people, Muhammad Ali, an amazing man, but he was very cocky. I don't think I could ever be like that. You know, Muhammad Ali used to, used to boast in press conferences to psych out his opponents. He used to say things like, um, for example, he said, I'm so quick, I can put the light off in my bedroom. I'm in bed before it gets dark. Right, which sounds impressive, but actually, oh, it's easy, just get a bedside light. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> that's not a, some sort of superpower, that's just a trip to Ikea. But this is the thing, you see, sometimes you hear someone say something, you think, ah, that's too far. There was, during the recent uh, cricket, the Ashes, um, except by the time this goes on, it won't be recent anymore, so I'll rephrase. There was once a, some cricket, and um, <laughs> that's just a little bit of uh, cleverness then, and just in case this is repeated, because Dave do tend to repeat things for a long time, uh, 25 years ago there was a cricket series, um, <laughs> that should cover it, just in case, there used to be a game called cricket, uh, and um, <laughs> so the, um, the Ashes, very exciting, even if you don't like cricket, that's fine, but there's no need to make people f sort of feel small about watching it, there was this, um, I won't say his name in case we don't get permission to use it, but uh, there's a, uh, a well-known hip-hop star, and I heard him on the radio saying, who, it was bleeped, but this is what he said, cricket's so boring, who wants to watch cricket? I'd rather eat shit, right? And that is an example of a stupid piece of exaggeration. You think, A, no, Dizzy, you wouldn't, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's pretty much safe, because it's quite a common name. You couldn't guess from that. Um, and B, don't say things like that. You should never say things like that. Life is very long. Your bluff may be called at some point. I wouldn't mind betting if he ever does find his math is packed with poo, he'll be thinking, I could have just gone to a one-day game or something. It wouldn't have killed me. Even at 2020, just to get it out of the way. <laughs> My wife and I, we're sort of quite a successful marriage. Um, I'm now 30, so I'm at the sort of stage where you think, how's my life going? And I say it's going fairly well. My wife and I, of course, we have the occasional argument. It takes quite a lot to keep a relationship together. I think, I think we'd all agree. Compromise, that's probably the key to it. When people ask, you know, how do you make a marriage work? For example, when we first moved to London, my wife was so keen to go on the London Eye, and I couldn't, I didn't really, I just didn't want to, basically. That's the long and short of it. So this is a classic example of compromise in a marriage. She really wanted to go on the London Eye, I really didn't, so as a compromise, we went. And uh, <laughs> that's what they mean by compromise makes a relationship work. Keep backing down, the sex will follow. <laughs> it, um... You're such a nice crowd, the expectations as high as they ever were. And uh, it's always quite difficult, it's generally quite difficult once something's been hyped. You've heard nothing tonight, but this will be great. Oh, you're going to have such a good time. There's, you'd be entitled to have a part of you thinking, this is going to be shit. There's just no, no one can possibly live up to this massive wall of hype. You see it all the time. Everything's hyped so much. 
And it's sort of all quite used to it, really. You almost get blind to it, the amazing things that advertisers say. Like that, um, that advert for Yorkie. Yorkie, it's not for girls. That's amazing. That no one questions that. Imagine if it was Snickers, not for the Chinese. You know, uh, <laughs> in, Nutrigrain, no Jews, thank you. You, know, you, you, you wouldn't be allowed to do that because it's not for girls. That's allowed suddenly. This is avatar, advertising. It's a very peculiar world, really. The world of hype. You can say anything. The trouble is, it, it almost means nothing now because it's gone too far. To, to try and actually get people excited now, you have to just set the bar so high. I saw a trailer for a horror film, Them, it was called. It's a, tr a terrible name, probably a terrible film, Them. But the trailer, as if I had any intention of seeing it, which I didn't, the trailer, if anything, made me even less likely to see it. It said, you'll never feel safe in your home again. <laughs> and you think, right, OK, I don't think I'll go and see that then, if anything. <laughs> this, if anything, that's a warning more than the trailer. Who the f*** wants that from an evening's entertainment? How was the film? Yeah, brilliant. We've had to move to Cheltenham, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> wife just cries herself to sleep. Great film, though. And, you know, we're all accustomed to the fact that it's all... Everything's exaggerated. I mean, we, we live in a world where people do exaggerate an awful lot because it's the only way that you can make yourself heard. To get anywhere in life, you kind of... It feels sometimes like you have to be 